Costa here with another chemistry lesson and today we're going to talk about balancing chemical equations. Now I got a warning here for you. If you're going to learn to balance equations and work with stoichiometry you must study and prepare for your chemistry class. There are no magical solutions. You must study. You must learn to write equations. You must learn to write formulas. You must learn to write names. And there are lessons on these. You've just got to practice. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the conservation of mass, balancing equations, and then we're going to practice a few. You'll need a periodic table and your polyatomic ion sheet. And if you don't have that download, there's a URL here at the bottom of the page. And just go to that URL and download your polyatomic ion PDF. You must know the periodic table, how to write chemical names. You must know chemical formulas and chemical equations. There's no sense trying to balance equations if you can't write them. And if you can't write them, if you don't know how to write formulas and names. Conservation of mass. All right, let's get started. Mass cannot be created uh, or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. Mass is conserved. What does that mean to us? Well, that means the masses of the products must equal the masses of the reactant. What you end up with is what you should have started with. So you may need to balance the equations you write. Here's some balancing hints. Treat polyatomic ions as a unit. Start with the most complex. Change the coefficients only. Do not change the subscripts once you know what the uh, compound is. And then check all the other substances every time that you do something. And make sure you didn't change the balance of everything. Things need to balance. Just like the equations in algebra, they must balance. Now here's a warning. Once the chemical formulas have been determined, you cannot change the subscripts, all right? You cannot change those subscripts. If you need to change the subscript, you wrote the wrong formula to begin with. Let's look at an example. Nitrogen combines with hydrogen to produce ammonia. First, let's write an equation. N2 plus H2 is NH3. You need to remember that nitrogen and hydrogen are polyatomic, or I should say they're diatomic. Now balance the H's. And we do that by finding the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3, which is 6. Adjust the coefficients. And remember, you can only change the coefficients. Check the nitrogen. And N2 equals 2N. That's true. And it's balanced. That was a pretty easy one. Let's look at another example. Maybe a little more difficult. Iron 3 hydroxide decomposes into iron 3 oxide and gives us water. Let's start with uh, the most complex to me. That would be the iron 3 oxide, and some of you might think it's the iron 3 hydroxide. Doesn't matter. This is where I want to start. And I'm going to balance the irons. Now notice that I need to put a 2 in the coefficient there. And then I need to check the O and H's. 2 times 3 is 6. So then I could change that to a 3. And I should have three oxygens and six hydrogens. It gives me a balanced equation. Again, uh, if you don't know how to do the um, factors, if you don't recognize factors and things, that might uh, be a little bit of a problem. Uh, you need to be up on your algebra a little bit. Here's another example. Copper and silver nitrate give us copper nitrate and uh, actually it's copper two nitrate and uh, silver. This time I'm going to take roll. One copper, one copper, one silver, one silver, one nitrate, two nitrates, and so it's not balanced. But I could just uh, balance that by changing the AgNO3 or the silver nitrate coefficient to 2 and the silver coefficient to 2. And by doing that, I'm going to have a balanced equation. Practice time balance the following equation. Well, I'm going to start with the uh, barium phosphate. And note there are three bariums here, but only one there. And so I'm going to change the coefficients. And notice that uh, I have two phosphates uh, on the right side, but only one on the left side. And so now notice uh, I put a two over there and we're good. That gives me six chlorines. 
on that side and six sodiums on that side. So that means I need to balance the sodium chloride, put a six there. And I think that if we look at it, I'm gonna rewrite it, that's balanced. Three bariums, three bariums, two phosphates, two phosphates. Now remember, keep polyatomic ions together, uh, usually. And then I have six chlorine and six sodium on each side. We're good. All right, as usual, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com and check out my PowerPoint videos and things at mrkazi.com or mrkazi'sworld.com, either one. And subscribe to my YouTube.